Intervals, page 1. Intervals are the distance between notes of any kind, and these can be notes in a scale, one note at a time, alternatively the notes in a chord stacked one on top of another. Let's look at the two basic types of intervals. The distances are the same ascending or descending, and going forward in the alphabet, or descending going backwards in the alphabet. A whole step is a whole step, half step is a half step, to me the universe under direction. So look at this, this first one. There are half steps. The two notes are E and F, open first string to the first fret, and B and C, fourth fret, third string to the fifth fret. Now on a piano, the E and the F and the B and C keys don't have a black key in between them. They're natural half steps. Look below that. These are whole steps. The two notes are G and A, open third string G to the second fret A, and C to D, first fret second string C to the third fret uh, second string D. And that's just a whole step. If you went backwards, A down to G or D down to C, you still want a whole step, so the basic distances are going to be the same. <music>
The reduced form of communication is used. The half and whole steps are omitted. Moreover, the names are reduced to a simple form. Uh, notice the slash or the seven at the end. I'll talk about that. So this is a slang terminology. Real musicians talk in intervals. They don't use do, re, mi or things like this. Like unison is just one. A major second is two. Major third, three. Perfect fourth, four. Perfect fifth, five. Major sixth, six. Major seven, seven. And an octave is eight. When audibilizing that major seventh, you really can't say slash. You'll probably say major seventh when you're, you're audibilizing. Look below that where the notes are. The C to the C, there is no movement. So that's the unison. It could also be called root, tonic, or first. C to D, whole step, is a major second. Next, C to E, two whole steps, is a major third. Next, C to F is two and a half steps, or a perfect fourth. Next, C to G, three and a half steps, a perfect fifth. Next, C to A, four and a half steps, a major sixth. Next is C to B, five and a half steps, or a major seventh. And the end is C to C, six whole steps or an octave. That's our six inches on the ruler. So these interval numbers of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, if I say a second, it's just commonly understood. I mean a major second. Now, if I want to use a lowered second or raised second, I have to put a flat or a sharp on that, and that's part of the slang. I wanted to talk about, I'm just injecting this in here, about perfect fifths and perfect fourths. And there's some very serious math involved in what we call intonation and, and frequencies of pitch. Uh, it goes off the deep end, and I'm showing a couple of charts here for you. In particular, there's one on ratios, and it shows some square roots. It's just insane. I can make a long story critically short. If we look up at the chart, we see the C note, two and a half steps up to F, which is a perfect fourth. But if I start at the octave C and I go down to the fifth, I have a half step B, whole step A, whole step G. Two and a half steps down. We will talk about that in a very short order about ascending and descending and the equivalence. If you go up a fourth, you're going down a fifth. The reason they're called perfect is they are a perfect subdivision. Scales are generally regarded to be a combination of what we call tetrachords. The first four notes, C, D, E, F, is the first tetrachord, and the second four notes, G, A, B, C, is the second tetrachord. Look below that. Intervals can be made smaller by lowering the top note a half step or raising the bottom note. For now, we'll just lower the top. The distances are smaller, and the specific names are changed to reflect this. Notice the unison did not change, nor the octave is present. That is not changed. But a diminished seventh appears. It has a double flat on it. This is four and a half steps, same as a major sixth. When this occurs, the note is enharmonic. Same tone, but two different names. Below that, three new rules are added. Any major interval made smaller becomes minor. Any perfect interval made smaller becomes diminished. Any minor interval made smaller becomes diminished. Look below that. It shows C to C. There is no movement again, and that's just unison root or first. The C to the D flat is a half step, and it's still two letter names, so it's called a minor second, because any major interval becomes minor. C to E flat, one and a half steps, is a minor third. C to F flat is two whole steps or a diminished fourth, and harmonic to a major third, yes. C to G flat, three whole steps, is a diminished fifth. Four whole steps, C to A flat, is a minor sixth. And C to B flat, five whole steps, is a minor seventh. And between that minor third and that minor seventh, those are important intervals. Finally, at the end of this, we see the C to the B double flat, four and one half steps or a diminished seventh. Now, the simple forms would appear a little different. This does not affect the first tone because there's no change, but the other tones have been reduced in size, so the numbers are given flats to reflect the change in the specific name. A minor second is now called flat two, minor third, 
flat 3, diminished 4th, flat 4, diminished 5th, flat 5, minor 6, flat 6, minor 7, flat 7, diminished 7th, a double flat 7. Move on to page 4. Intervals, page 4. Now, intervals can be made larger by raising the top note or lowering the bottom note, and we're only going to raise the top. And these are just simply called augmented. The names are reduced in a simple form. An augmented second is a sharp 2, augmented fourth, sharp 4, one of my favorite tones, augmented fifth, sharp 5, very common in uh, jazz. And an augmented six, the sharp six, and it is exactly the same as a minor seventh thumb, is a little way that uh, modern composers, especially of the classical eras, uh, kind of skirted the rules to resolve chords. We have a French, German, and Italian sixth, and refers to the augmented sixth. Not all of the notes are used. The augmented third and augmented seventh, that they really actually do exist. They just don't get used. The only rule any interval made larger is augmented. That's it. So we see a C to a D sharp, one and a half steps is an augmented second. Okay, so right off the bat that's the same as a minor third. And there's a little point of contention when we talk about pentatonics with that. The next two notes, C to F sharp, is three whole steps or an augmented fourth. That is enharmonic with the diminished fifth. The C to the G sharp is four whole steps or an augmented fifth and harmonic to a minor sixth. And C to A sharp is five whole steps or an augmented sixth, and that is the same as a minor seventh. So these have some very serious and harmonic properties. And the two special intervals that need to be discussed, the augmented fourth is also known as a tritone, and the augmented sixth has a special function harmony. So read with me in the lower part here. The tritone is an augmented fourth distance between two, two notes in a dominant chord. And the minor seventh and the major third, in harmony, the resolution of the five chord to the tonic one, is the backbone of what is called a perfect cadence. There's other cadences, but that's the biggie. Look at the example of G7 to C. The third of the G7 chord is B, which is the seventh tone of the C major scale. That is the leading tone of the scale of C major, or its seventh tone. And then the minor seventh of G is F, and it is the fourth tone of the scale. In harmony, the resolution of the 5-7 chord to 1 is a very strong cadence. It's its backbone. The major third of the G is a B, and it wants to resolve to the C, the tonic of the C chord. The minor seventh of the G is the F, and it wants to step down to the E, the major third of the tonic C. The resolution is one of a number of ways to end a cadence or resolve the key. I have a little saying for this, and I want you to remember this. Three up, seven down. This refers to the, the G7 chord or any dominant seventh chord. The third of the dominant seventh chord resolves up to the tonic of the one chord. So in this case, the third of G7B resolves up to C. And the seventh of the five chord resolves from... Uh, its tone down to the major third of, of the tonic. In this case, the seventh tone of G7 is F and resolves down to E of the C chord. Thus, three up, seven down. Look at the example to the right. You see a little uh, series of notes here, and you can see that a, a finale is put in what's called its alpha notes. It puts the letter names right side the note. They're not very clear, and I apologize for that, but they do exist. And you see this box, and you see it highlighted. It says, click to activate, and listen. So you heard it just go 5, 1. You heard it do the, the typical resolution. Very last thing to discuss down at the bottom, the augmented 6 is a chord before the 5 chord, and it sometimes can be called a predominant. And that moves to the 1 chord. So you have an augmented 6th, and then it moving to 5, and then to the 1. Uh, Harmony has three of the most common. The Italian 6th, the French 6th, and the German 6th. And there are a few more. Uh, this is the part of Interlocked that's better explained using a standard Harmony and Theory book or a website, in which I'll have plenty in here. You'll have links to all kinds of good stuff. 
The goal is to give the reader the insight to the chords. I have in this book to a link that will be much be better at explaining this. To simplify the part of intervals discussion will be at a later point in time. Go to this link, teoria.com. Intervals, page 5, The Extensions. Extended intervals listed here are the only ones you'll likely see for the guitar. There are others, but these are the ones you will need for now. The simple names, um, a major ninth is simply called 9, a major tenth is 10, a perfect 11 is 11, a perfect 12th is 12, major 13 is 13, and a major 14 is 14. So, C to D, we go past the octave, seven whole steps, is a major ninth. Next, the C to the E, eight whole steps, is a major tenth. When you hear Paul McCartney's Blackbird, that is built in tenth intervals, and a lot of classical guitar is counterpointed melody built with a bass note and a melody in tenths. That is totally common. The next two, C to F, is uh, eight and a half steps, or a perfect eleventh, sometimes known as chordal harmony. C to G, nine and a half steps, is a perfect twelfth quintetal harmony. C to A is ten and a half steps and a major thirteen. And thirteenth chords occur in jazz all the time. C to B uh, is eleven and a half steps or a major fourteenth, and they, they do exist. And C to C, the second octave, is twelve whole steps. So the simple names, major ninth equals nine, major tenth equals ten, perfect eleventh equals eleven, major thirteen equals thirteen, major fourteen equals fourteen. You can have interval distances all the way up to twenty-four notes apart. Intervals, page 6, Altered Extensions. Extended intervals listed here are the altered extensions. You might see a chord name, say, a C7 Alt or a D13 Sharp 11. This falls into what are called altered dominants. Notice that the uh, there's no sharp 3s and no sharp 7s. The tones below also occur in diminished scales, too. So the very first one I forgot to highlight, which is C to D flat, is six and a half steps is called a minor ninth. C to D sharp, seven and a half steps, is called an augmented ninth. Notice that they were both the Ds of some kind. C E flat is step seven and a half steps also, but now it's called a minor tenth. So we find that the augmented ninth and the minor minor tenth are enharmonic to each other. Then we have C to F sharp, which is nine whole steps, or the augmented eleventh. And we see the C to the G flat is nine whole steps, and that's a diminished twelfth. They are enharmonic. Now the C to the G sharp, ten whole steps, is an augmented twelfth. And C to A flat is ten whole steps, and that's a minor thirteenth. And they are enharmonic. At the bottom, the simple names are minor nine equals flat nine. Augmented ninth equals sharp nine. Minor tenth equals flat ten. Augmented eleventh is sharp eleven. Let me talk about that briefly. George Russell wrote a book called The Lydian Chromatic uh, Theory of Harmony, and he talks about how the sharp eleven in the Lydian scale is basically the center of tonality. A lot of your big jazzers took his uh, book very, very seriously. Next, the diminished twelfth is a flat twelve, the augmented twelfth is a sharp twelve, and the minor thirteen is a flat thirteen. The highlighted stuff at the bottom, sharp nine, flat nine, and sharp five, flat five, or any combination of those four tones are referred to as altered dominant tones. So I could have a sharp nine, flat five, or a flat nine, sharp five. I can have a sharp nine, sharp five, and a flat nine, flat five. Any combination of those four and they're considered altered dominance. Mm -hmm. 